A Dixon, Tennessee junior high school student was reduced to tears by a teacher who denied her a grade for submitting a research paper on the life of Jesus Christ. Brittany K. Suttle was given a zero for refusing to select another subject. Papers permitted by the teacher dealt with the occult and reincarnation. In another story, a pro-life activist in Buffalo, New York, was fined $10,000 for protesting outside an abortion clinic. No fines were levied against the pro-choice group who blocked the entrance to a church parking lot preventing worshippers from attending Sunday service. In California, a property owner was sued for refusing to rent an apartment to an unmarried couple. The couple originally lied to her and said they were married. When she found out they weren't, she evicted them. The couple's lie is not the issue. The woman's morality is. The moral code the property owner is following is identical to the state's, which forbids cohabitation on all 19 state campuses. The issue is that the property owner's morality is based on the Bible, which is illegal. In the media, Christians are portrayed as simple-minded buffoons or repressive rednecks. Homer Simpson's next-door neighbor, Ned Flanders, is a pious hypocrite. In one episode, Flanders is upset with Simpson's blasphemy. He calls his pastor, who is portrayed as bored and uncaring, and curses Flanders himself after hanging up the phone. Reverend, the point is he said a bad word. Oh, oh, right, yeah. Well, kids usually pick these things up from some place, find out who's doing it, and uh, direct them to the Bible. Where in the Bible? Uh, page 900. But Rick. Damn Flanders. The Last Temptation of Christ portrays the Lord as an ineffective and frightened spiritual midget. Live from Golgotha, a book by Gore Vidal, pictures the Lord as fat and effeminate and depicts Paul and Timothy's relationship as homosexual. In the movie Cape Fear, all the villains are Christians portrayed as ignorant hypocrites or rednecks. Ready to be born again, Miss Bowden? A few minutes alone with me, darling, you will be speaking in tongues. The Bible tells us that during the tribulation, the Antichrist will make war with the tribulation saints and overcome them. The war is already beginning, and the first shots have been fired. The casualty lists are getting longer and longer. Prophecy is coming to pass before our very eyes as we watch from our front row seats. You know, the Bible tells us that in the last days, we will witness the emergence of a revived Roman Empire. If you look back at the original Roman Empire, you know, at the time of Jesus and then afterwards for hundreds of years, you begin to realize that under the rule of that empire, Christians were killed. And they were killed not because they said that Jesus was Lord and that Jesus was God, but because they said he was the only God. And there was the rub of the whole thing, because under the Roman Empire, it was a society of unity and diversity. They had brought together much of the known world as one, and they had to have a quality between between all people. So the problem with Christians is that they said Jesus was the only way. And that's exactly what we're going to witness in the world today. As the world moves more and more towards unity, more and more coming together as one in the name of saving this planet, they cannot permit the fly in the ointment, so to speak, that is someone who stands in the way and says, no, there are more important matters than the saving of this earth. But the Christian has to stand up and say, no, a soul is more important than unity. And we can't put away um, our identity as Christians and our belief that there is only one name given under heaven whereby we must be saved um, in the name of unity. And so that is why more and more we are going to witness Christians being hated in the days ahead, exactly as the scriptures told us would happen in the last days. Now, there's another point I want to make here. We mentioned that the tribulation state saints, that the Antichrist will make war with the saints and overcome them. We are not talking here about the church of Jesus Christ because we are gone to heaven in the rapture by that time and the scripture says very clearly that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church but these are the martyrs of Jesus Christ who are saved after the rapture period so I just wanted to make that clear before we move on as well In the small town of Maastricht, Holland, the representatives of the 12 members of the European community met to hammer out an agreement which would unite the assembled nations into a single political force. The resulting document, known as the Maastricht Treaty, set out the provisions for dropping trade barriers, eliminating borders, and developing a new unified currency. 
This new form of currency was dubbed the ECU, or European Currency Unit, and would be administered by a strong central banking authority. The community was rocked by the refusal of Denmark to ratify the agreement, following a national referendum in that country. France recently held its national referendum, ratifying the treaty by the narrowest of margins, 51 to 49 percent. The closeness of this vote sent shockwaves reverberating around the world, causing stock markets to plunge and currencies to falter. Britain and Italy were forced to remove their currencies from the market to protect them against further losses. Sweden temporarily raised its short-term interest rate to an unprecedented 500 percent. The community is reeling from this latest blow. EC President Jacques Delors threatened to resign if France failed to ratify. Britain's John Major stated a failure in France would mean a no vote in Britain, signaling a death blow to the agreement. Dissatisfaction in the United States is evidenced by what is being called the Ross Perot phenomena. In Canada, a constitutional crisis is threatening to break up the country. Russia is existing in a power vacuum, and Yugoslavia is a collection of ungovernable warring ethnic factions. Most of the republics of the former Soviet Union are in crisis. Time Magazine's International Edition, September 21, 1992, quotes Horst Telschik, a former national security advisor to Helmut Kohl. Western governments are showing themselves less and less able to settle problems. People are waiting for leadership. They feel there is none. In One World Under Antichrist, Peter quotes Gerald Misch, there are few issues that so clearly demonstrate the fiction of territorial sovereignty as this debt bomb crisis. There is no question that the world is seeking today, Paul, for a new kind of leadership. We have clearly entered the global age, but there seems to be a vacuum of leaders of a global stature. You know, it looked like George Bush was becoming one of those leaders during the Persian Gulf War, and yet his ratings have slid right back down to nothing at all. Um, Mikhail Gorbachev, I still think he holds tremendous influence on the world scene on the days ahead, is considered a world-class leader, as I guess is John Paul II. But other than that, the world is looking around today for leadership that can bring us into this new age, and they are not able to find it anywhere on the planet. This is setting the stage. The Bible indicates that there will be this power vacuum, and out of that will rise the Antichrist. With a look more stout than his fellows, the Bible tells us, with a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Um, so powerful, in fact, that the whole world will wonder after the beast and worship him. This is absolutely an incredible statement, but it's into these crises of the world today that such a powerful leader can arise in the days ahead on a global scale. And I think we would be remiss, Paul, if we didn't take a second at this point and point out how the role of media can make a global leader today in a way that could never have been done a few years ago. Well, we, we spend a lot of time on the TV show talking about how the media can, is so powerful in portraying Christians in a bad light. They are equally powerful in elevating somebody to almost a supernatural stature. That's right, and imagine the world the moment after the rapture takes place, you know, you're going to have CNN and Nightline trying to cover, going around interviewing experts, trying to figure out what took place here. And it's into that focused attention with all the world's media wondering what's going on and panic spreading out through the world that a man of great stature, and as the Bible says, a look more stout than his fellows, is going to arise onto the world scene, speak great soothing words to the people, explain what supposedly just took place with the disappearance of these millions of people. And he comes with all power and signs and lying wonders and a strong delusion coming upon the world in the same time, he will be able to be elevated globally just like that. In this generation, it couldn't have happened in another.